Hello, this is Paul Cannon. Welcome to Meet Houston Missions and the Simmons and Fletcher Local uh, Missions Podcast. This is a opportunity we provide so that missions can get their name out and find volunteers, and so the people who have a heart to serve can find the place that they are destined to be serving at in the Houston and Katy areas. If you're interested in this, please reach out to me, uh, or please uh, reach out by watching these videos and learning more about these groups. If you are a missions leader, reach out to me about being a part of it. Uh, I can be reached at 713-932-0777. Today, we have a very special guest. We have Dr. Monique Williams, who is the Chief Advancement Officer of the Bread of Life. Uh, I'm actually very excited to learn about the Bread of Life myself a little more, um, and, but uh, she's going to tell us all about it. So without further ado, Dr. Williams, please tell us about the Bread of Life. Hello, and thank you so much for this opportunity to speak to you about the Bread of Life and the work that we've done in Houston for over three decades. Um, so I will start with this. Every organization has some sort of root, um, and our root is actually in St. John's downtown, which is a United Methodist Church that was founded by pastors Rudy and Juanita Rasmus. And so they came into this space in downtown Houston 31 years ago now, and they saw this, you know, beautiful older church and knew that this is where they wanted to plant and began a ministry. But consider the fact that they did that in downtown Houston, which means you open the doors to the church and you open the doors to the outside where there was a huge homeless or now we say unhoused population. Uh, if people think that it might be big now, it was huge back then. And so they knew that as their mission for the church began to um, find foundation, they need to start something else that would help them to really, really push their work beyond just the church doors. And so Bread of Life was formed um, as a response to that. And what they did, what most churches do, nonprofits say, okay, there are people outside who need food, let's feed them. So they started with one hot meal. And then it became five hot meals a day for nearly 20 years. Wow, that's a lot of meals. If I said that properly. If I didn't say mm. that, 500, right. Um, nearly every day for about 20 years. And wow. in doing that work, you began to ask yourself if we're doing all that we can do. Um, if you're like me and, I, and you have a meal at breakfast, you're already thinking about lunch. Then you're thinking about dinner, right? And our right. friends who are unhoused are no different. The meal is great and they need it, but there's more. And so um, what, what St. John's and Bread of Life began to do was kind of imagine what the more could look like. And in that history, um, established another nonprofit, which is Timonos. So St. John's is our root. Bread of Life was formed and Timonos, CDC was formed. Timonos is the housing component of our work. Okay. And people wonder, what does housing have to do with food? Well, <laughs> where can I cook a good meal, right? Where can I um, store um, the food that I'm going to eat later on, right? So we um, have the sister nonprofit who does permanent supportive housing. They are still in existence, have several different housing units, and we've worked alongside them to provide support. So housing was one space. We were like, okay, we've got the meal. We need housing. And then more research began to look, we began to look at um the multiple other social determinants of health that kind of lead people into um, maybe an impoverished space or a challenging space in their lives. And so apart from housing, um, there's also um, lack of information or understanding information. Um, and so one thing that we did was create a, a radio station. We have Amazing 102.5. Oh, wow. How awesome. Radio station. Yes. Where we share information and inspiration about resources that we give internally and that we also give externally. Uh, and we allow other small organizations that are like minded to come and speak about what they do, who they are and how they can serve the community. So inspiration oh, cool. was one thing. Thank you. Inspiration was one thing, information, um, housing. And then we thought about the idea that um you know, sometimes in order to get like a job, you need an ID and you right. think it's simple until you've been unhoused for a while and find out it's a process. So we have um, a health equity team. This health equity team are care coordinators. They're like, okay. what is your need right now today? Okay. Is it 
you know, we need food, got you, we'll do that. But then how do we get to a place where we don't have enough food? Is it because we don't have a job? How about we help you with a resume, right? How about we help you with the ID that you need in order to fill out applications? How about we provide an educational opportunity? We also have education. So you've got the housing, you've got information inspiration, you've got um, sustainability through care coordination, and we also have education. So we provide uh, several certifications at no cost in partnership with uh, several organizations, but primarily Quest Diagnostics. And okay. we provide community health worker um, certification. We provide um, phlebotomy and soon a Cisco networking security systems. No kidding. And there's no cost, um, 12 weeks to 36 weeks. Then you're able to actually get this certification and then we hand you over into our employment space and work to try to get you employed. Um, wow. So, I mean, all of these different areas and spaces. And lastly, what people know us for are our distribution. So I, I mentioned the, the meal at the beginning of our history, where we return back to that meal. Um, this time last year, partnership with the city of Houston, we provide okay. about 250 hot meals four times a week in downtown wow. Houston um, near the old police station. And so okay. we've got that initiative. And we have two large distributions a month. One where it's um, all food, just food with Houston Food Bank Partnership, fresh food for about two hours every first Saturday to 12 o'clock. People can drive up, they can walk up, and they can also use the Metro Lift services if they're clients of ours. And then we have our large distribution. for uh, It's a third Saturday, 8 to 12, with food and supplies. And those supplies include household items, hygiene items, et cetera. So just think about it. If one person were to come into Bread of Life and have a specific need when it came to food, we can provide the food and then we can provide ways to prevent getting into a food insecure uh, space through education, wow. through employment, inspiration, information, distributions, et cetera. So that is kind of the big picture of Bread of Life. <laughs> That sounds like a really big picture. It sounds like you guys have a lot going on. I am yes, uh, I am betting that you guys have not just a lot of employees, but also a lot of volunteers that you have to have to keep something like that running. Is that correct? Oh my gosh, we are so grateful for our volunteers. So we have a warehouse that stores the, the household items I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. And our volunteers are the ones that help us to box these relief boxes. They're about $250 worth of household products. They are coming every uh, day during the week to help support that. And then they come to distribution and help us give them out. And they help us feed those who are outdoors. So it wouldn't happen without some extremely dedicated hands and feet um, to help support us. Well, that is awesome. If people want to uh, get involved in an organization like this and give back some time and, and uh, resources in order to help people out, how can they get in touch with you guys to do that? They would just go to our website, www.breadoflifeinc.org, and there's a volunteer tab. Click on that. There are several opportunities that are available. Like I mentioned, the hot meals, um, boxing, the the relief boxes, distributing those relief boxes, coming to help for, um, you know, managing the lines, registering the people, just being hospitality, being a light. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities for people to support. And then also, if you're unable to physically support um, and, and would love to give into a space like ours, Welcome to do so. Same website, www.breadoflifeinc.org and go to donate and please, um, you know, find it in your hearts to help us to continue this mission. Awesome. Now, um, do you guys also accept any kind of like food or clothing type donations? Great question. So no clothing at this moment. Now, ever so often, people will just donate. It. They just assume that we, you know, can utilize that <laughs> and we will use it. We will. Um, but we don't actually have a clothing component of our work specifically. Um, okay. What will happen is with both food and clothing, um, we will just kind of have specific drives. Um, mm -hmm. For that, there are some organizations that will have drives on our behalf or right now during the holiday season. We have a drive. We're saying, hey, you know, um, any type of canned goods or non-perishable items, we will accept them so we can create these boxes um, and bags for those who are unhoused or in need. Um, and then, you know, just kind of go from there. So we're open 
to mostly everything. Um, but and we'll find a, a home for everything. But we will specifically always ask people to give um, through drives to our pantry, um, which is also located in the warehouse. OK, I'm curious, um, how many people are you guys uh, providing housing for nowadays? Oh, yeah, yeah. So that is a good question. So the housing component, as I mentioned, is Timonos right now. Right now, we have two active housing units that mm -hmm. are open um, for permanent supportive housing, Timnos 1 and 2. And between the two, I would say we have about maybe 100, 150 between the two. Um, we are currently, we had a third one, no longer in use, but we're building the fourth as we speak, opening very soon. Um, okay. We have a fifth underway we're reusing wow. a space called uh formerly called the Knowles Roland Academy for Youth oh, wow. and we are now redeveloping that space into more housing it's going to be 31 um single uh, occupancy units and uh we've got number 6 in our minds so yeah yeah <laughs> along with Timinos are really really building and like i said like Timinos being the primary like manager of these buildings we as bread of life has we have kind of swooped in to provide um like support um right like right now we're developing a behavioral health component of the work oh, wow. right we've that got people's awesome. attention they're in we've got them in a safe place now what more can we do to help them feel um to adjust to this new space and to find the things that they need for their mental and behavioral health as well. Well, that is awesome. I know that's always a big concern anytime you're <clears throat> taking care of people off the street because you never know what walks of life they've come from. They, they're they all going to have their own unique medical issues, mental health issues, yeah. um, physical yeah. issues, that sort of thing. And so the ability to serve them often requires more than just providing housing and food, but it requires a staff that understands issues and it can at least identify them and get them to where they're going. It sounds like you've got uh, some people on staff that can help with that issue. And that's, that's awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. We do all our, all we can to be attentive to the needs of those we care for hear, listen, observe, and then provide a relevant need. You know, um, some of us who aren't or have never been in these situations would kind of assume lots of things that people need. Oh, well, oh, I know they would need this, or I know they would need that, as opposed to us asking and listening and hearing, this is what I need. Um, so yeah. the departments that we develop, the initiatives we develop are really all based on what um, we're learning as we walk, walk alongside um, our friends. Uh, yeah, and then it's ongoing learning process anytime you're uh, involved in missions it seems like um i was going to ask you a question i'm curious if somebody is in a situation where they need your help how do they find you guys well, we've got two options come to our location which is 2019 crawford street um houston texas 77002 um but we also have the option on that same website that i mentioned um that says community care and allows them to click, um, if they have the, a website option, allows them to click and fill out a, a very simple form um, so that one of our community health workers can reach out to them and provide support that way. Gotcha. Okay. And I guess there's like a screening process or something that y'all go through to see whose who's, uh, needs y'all have the ability to meet and that sort of thing. And and. You're absolutely right about that. I mean, while we want to do all that we can and we will, uh, we can't be everything to everyone. So part of that that team is just being a hub of resources as well. So once we talk to them and have this dialogue and find out what their needs are, we're going to begin to kind of reach out right to our partners um, in hope, right? Our, our partners to see if we can make sure that those particular needs are met that may not be within our wheelhouse. You know, so even if somebody is in need and it's not uh, fitting for your organization at a particular time, you can help them at least look into other opportunities and options to help them and, and meet them at their needs. Correct? Yeah, absolutely correct. That is awesome. It's a great resource for people. Um, but, well, that's wonderful. Is there anything else that uh, you'd like to add? Um, I often... Oh. I didn't ask you, do you guys hold any type of uh, fundraisers or events that people can get involved in and if they want to get involved in that way? So no specific events right now. We do have just the ongoing giving opportunity through our um, through our website. Uh, we will post on our social media. So on Instagram, Bread of Life HTX. 
Um, and so we'll, we will kind of uh, kind of announce initiatives. Uh, we announce them through the social media, through our emails, um, campaigns as well. And um, when we do have an event, we will post, you know, those those opportunities as well. Is there anything else about the organization or about what you guys do that you would like to share with everybody before I let you go? I think I've given you all the the technical things, um, but just, you know, please know this is an organization 31 years now um, and going nowhere uh, because we have seen the need. We have grown um, and expanded with the needs in Houston. We are alongside our friends. We are listening. Um, we are in a place of learning ourselves. And so I just want you to know, the, the audience to know that uh, Bread of Life is truly an authentic place of inclusive um, inclusiveness, um, of care, of love, and be beyond anything else, making sure that people feel like it's a dignified experience that we see them, that we embrace them, um, and that if the need can't be met here, it will be met and we are dedicated um, to ensuring that they are well. That is awesome. Um, thank you so much for being a guest, Dr. Williams. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on. This is Paul Cannon with Meet Houston Missions and the Simmons and Fletcher Local Missions Podcast. Uh, again, I'd remind anyone that uh, is a leader of a local missions that's doing work uh, like Bread of Life is or similar type work. You're the people we want to talk to. You're the people we want to hear from. Uh, give me an email at pcannon at simmonsandfletcher.com or send or give us a call 713-932-0777. Um, it's always our privilege and opportunity to help organizations like Bread of Life find new volunteers. So we'll do what we can to help. Thank you so much, Dr. Williams, for being on. Thank you. It was an honor. Thank you.